to the news is Richard Pestis. He's a cycling journalist who runs the website Pez Cycling News and joins us now via Skype. Uh, Richard, thanks for being here. Are you surprised at all by this news? Uh, thanks for having me, Scott. Um, yeah, I, I gotta say, emotionally, I'm a little bit surprised by it. I, you know, I've been a fan of of riders for a long time. Even even when he was a mountain biker, I I, I was a fan. I was I was in uh, Milan in 2012, the day he won the Giro, and it was a I was thrilled. It was a, one of the best sporting days for Canadians, and I think it remains that way. Um, and I, I'd always hoped that that he was going to be one of the guys that that had never sort of crossed over onto the dark side, but I've also been covering the sport as a journalist for 10 years, and and I see, you know, I'm 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 not naive to lay the land out there into what riders are doing as as cyclists or or even as professional athletes to get ahead in the sport and and, and what's you know sort of what's considered the norm to compete at a at a top level. So uh, there's a part of me that's not that's not that surprised that at some point he was you know he he used performance enhancing substances. Yeah, well, um, Canadians have been cheering on Ryder Hedgeshaw all along his career, especially as of late when he's had some real notable success. We're also not naive to what's truly going on in the cycling world. We all found out the hard way uh, from what Lance Armstrong admitted to. Is it naive to believe Ryder Hedgeshaw when he says that that was a chapter in his life that happened a long time ago and is now closed? Uh, I don't know if I would describe it that way. I think that everyone's going to make their own decision. You know, we've been... Whether everyone's going to decide whether they want to believe Ryder or, or not, and that's something we've also, we'll all figure out. But it's it's been such a part of cycling that um, yeah, you know, even I threw away my rose-colored glasses, you know, a couple of years ago, I think. And uh, you know, the 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 racing that we've seen happening in the last couple of years, um, as much as I still want to believe that that these are you know uh, uh, pure uh, victories by the riders uh, and clean victories by the riders. Uh, there's somewhere in the back of my my gut. There's always the a question of a doubt now, just because you know since the 90s um, and the, the, with the advent of a lot more scientific doping practices, it's just become such a part of the sport that that it's impossible for us now. I think as 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 fans to just go ah, it's not gonna, it's not happening. I think there's so much water is passed under the bridge that that we're we're all a little bit suspicious all the time now, and that's just that's just not going to change for. Uh, you know, probably another generation yeah. of bikers is going to take to change that. Richard, can't let you go without asking you one thing quickly. Do you know at all, uh, as a cycling journalist, whether Ryder Hedgeshaw has been asked about doping in the past and or whether he's been accused of it? Uh, I believe he has not been accused of it. I don't, and I don't, I don't know that he has. It's, it's been my understanding that he's never failed drug tests and has never had any problems with it. And I, and I've never, you know, in, it's never come to my knowledge that he's been associated with them. Um, with anything like like this, so I was. I, that's why I was kind of surprised when I read that he had actually admitted to it. All right, Richard Pestis with uh, Pez Cycling News, uh, joining us now via Skype from North Vancouver. Appreciate your time today, sir. All right, thanks.